Okay guys, we got a pretty exciting day. There's a new John Deere dealership that opened up in town and there's also a new case dealership that's gonna open up, I don't think over there, but like somewhere on the other side of those bins over there in that town, which means we got a lot of equipment support coming. I mean, a lot of dealer support. So this is gonna be kind of interesting. We may trade in the 8110 today. We're thinking about next year going to a 24 row planter and we could use a little more horsepower. We're gonna see what kind of deal we can uh, we can make with this place, but I gotta get a full tour of this place because this is, this is looking pretty awesome. I'm going to get my drone up in the air. I always carry my drone with me and check out this place. Holy Toledo. Prairie State Tractor. They got a pond out front. They got a bunch of 60 and 70 series John Deere combines. Oh yeah, this place is looking nice. It's a no-fly zone. Put that thing down. You don't okay. have authorization for airspace. Okay, hey, hey. I'm sorry, man. Let me let me land it. Okay, we got to do some wheeling and dealing in here. Maybe get a special. I'd like to upgrade to 20 or 30 series John Deere. Like 8,000. That'd be awesome. Let's see if they're open. Yep, they're open. No way. Buck? Do I really have to deal with you? Who would yeah. have expected Buck to work at the local John Deere dealership? Well, usually I make more money here than I ever did working with you guys. Nate, you're here too? Gosh dang, yeah. what the heck? Yeah, I thought he I was the first one in here. He tried calling me handsome so that way he could get a deal and I told him that's not how that works and I proceeded to walk by him with a full case of hydraulic oil and put it on the shelf. you trying to get into Nate's a case guy. What's Nate doing here? Well, he might have actually oh, become some a... John well, Deere equipment. Well, I thought he was just becoming American and actually choosing the right brand for once. Well, hardy har har. My biggest tractor I own is a John Deere. Well, then you're doing it right. Just for some odd reason decided to paint something red and call it good. I did not paint anything red. That was the case I used to show. Hey, guys, I got work orders I gotta fill. Okay. So what are we doing okay. today? Uh, I know you, so that means I get a discount. Perfect. Okay, so... The only thing you technically get is a family discount, and that's only about 15%. That's not bad. Okay. You're dressed, you dress, you look, look nice today, Buck. Dress good. You've been working out, man. Yeah, I've been working out the $40,000 of debt that you put me in. <laughs> Come on now. What do we got? So what, what are we looking for? Okay, I'm looking to upgrade, trade in the 8110. I wish I could keep that thing, but trade in the 8110 for an 8430 or like an 8520 if you got one. Are you trading in the 16 row planter too or uh, just the tractor? I think I got to keep I got to keep the 16 row. I'd like to go to 24 row, but you don't I mean you don't have any stock even. No, at least not to my knowledge right now. I think I got to keep the 16 row. Next year I'm thinking I'll upgrade to 24. Since it technically is opening weekend, I will kind of give you guys a little bit of a rundown of our system setup. We have primary new equipment out in the front yard. Implement stuff is towards the back. I tried to fight for like a seasonal organization of stuff, but it ended up just being they threw stuff out here. So we got combines, we got tractors, we got planters, we got discs, we got old, we got new. It really is all season all season spread out. Some of the nicer brand new, or we have one brand new four wheel drive behind you, or at least newer, it's that, I. it's a 30 series. It's like a 94, 96, 30 back on the mound. The newer combines are up front from the STS series. Uh, we do have two old case ones in the back. And then our believe this is the third. No, it's a 20 or a 30 series. This is a 20 series that sits up front. There's just a handful of bigger. This is your bigger field horses. This is the 85, 20. Ooh. This one's a bit older. It does have about 2000 hours on it. So it's not like it's been run through, but it has at least seen some field work. Yeah. There's an 8430 that we have, though, that I'd recommend if you're going to be pulling 24 rows and you want just modernization, go get the 30 series. It's got a bigger cab. It's got a little bit better power range on it. Okay. And these are just kind of your more medium tractors with the 70, with the 7000s. What do you think about two tracks? I was thinking about maybe going to a two track. If you want to get something that has less ground compaction, then this is probably a great idea. My only kind of gripe is with these is that the it's a lot more expensive to maintenance. You're not really going to gotcha. have too much of a problem, but the maintenance on these are probably going to be higher than if you just had four rubber tires. Gotcha. Well, don't they make saddle tanks for these tractors? They do. I don't have any in stock at the moment. It's really a matter of, and this is also, a, it's a 20. So again, you're getting the smaller cab. The 8430 has the best cab that we have out right now. That's the, that's the best cab you're going to be able to buy. You care if I sit in her? Go right ahead. You can probably take the key out of your old tractor and put it in there and it'll start it. Oh, it's got a key. You left a key in it. I'll start her. Yeah. She's got 4,000 4, hours on there. Holy Toledo. Who ran this before? A big BTO or what the heck? I think it was some wheat farmers out of Kansas. Okay. But this tractor actually runs 330 horsepower for powertrain itself. On the back, you got five hydraulic remotes along with the three-point quick hitch system. Pretty convenient. The visibility on a track tractor is a lot better because, you know, 
no, you're not, you're look, you're, you have a lot more open space where the tires are supposed to be. There's just better visibility out of the cab. Gotcha. That is a plus side. Again, you want maintenance, get a track tractor. Probably won't give you too much of a hassle, but I'd, I'd prefer to get wheels. Gotcha. Okay. That's the 8430 though, right behind you. This is the newer cab. How many hours you got on it? This one's, uh, this one's pretty much brand new. I think it's under 400. Whew. This one was not used really at all. Let me hop up in her. I have to double check that. Yeah, this is nice. Has a nice cab to it. It's got the swivel seat in here. Let me start her up. It's it's about the same. 330, somewhere in that range. Oh yeah. It's got a 2600 display. That's, that's gonna be a more expensive tractor though, because you know it is newer. Buck, you care if I take this for a spin around the lot? Uh let me take off the planner first. There you go. Got her disconnected. Oh, off. Let's see. I think the seat. Oh, that is awesome. The seat rotates here, guys. That is cool. Put her in gear. Uh, it's got ILS front suspension too. Boy, this is a pretty nice tractor, guys. It's gonna be tough not buying this tractor. Five hundred ninety-five thousand dollars. It can be yours. We got financing because I know your credit scores went downhill. <laughs> Nate, tell me what you think of that thing, man. Hop in or give her a test drive. I don't know about test drive, but this is a nice looking monitor. What series monitor is this, Buck? 2600. That's actually a really nice tractor. The only thing I don't like is these ugly, this ugly rock box in the front with these weights. You don't like the rock box and the weights? No, that is ugly looking to me. It's either the rock box or the weights. Pick your poison and take the rest of them off. Ah. Yeah, exactly. You either want the rock box or you want the weights. Let me, you don't do both. Let me test out the uh, 8520 over here. Tracks and wheels would be interesting. Okay, we'll test out the 8520. I got the grain card on the back. Kind of liking this tractor too. Honestly, getting a 20 series might not be bad either. Okay, Buck, what do you got for prices? Both? I'd like to get either the 8430 or the 8520T, or maybe both. The 8520T we got listed at 165,000. The 8430 is at 195,000, and then the 8520 regular is at 132,000. What? Why is the T more expensive than the regular? Because it's got less hour. It's got less hours on it. <sighs> okay. Okay. What would you give me for the 8110? It's got 4,800 hours on it. Right, 55,000. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's the newest I've seen, tractor. I've, that's a I've new seen the tires on that thing. Those tracks. No, 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 no. Listen, it's not even my tractor. I know, but I know better not. You gonna try to mark that thing up to at least Lock. 100 grand and try to sell it? No, yeah, no, that no. thing's that thing's worth at least 80. Huh. Clearly, you've never worked at a dealership. You gotta get some give and take here. Best I'll do is best I'll do is sixty-five. You might want to take. I gotta that, make man, a profit that's... margin too, buddy. I have to go home and eat. By four hundred thousand dollars, you got yourself insane. Buddy, no one's gonna sit around here and buy that tractor for one hundred twelve thousand. I will give you sixty-five thousand dollars for that tractor as a trade-in. Because by the time I get it service put back on the lot and everything else, I'm looking at about eighty-two thousand. I'm gonna put it the back up as. Uh, but they don't need all that. I mean, how many hours was on that tractor? Forty-eight hundred. Gosh, tough to bargain with, Buck. I told you, I gave you sixty-five thousand dollars. Have we ever replaced the wheels on that tractor? No. Make it seventy. No, sixty-five thousand. Seventy. Come on, you got to come up a little bit more. We bought that tractor for hundred k. I don't have you to sell you anything, all right? I told you, that's my margin of what I'm able to give you. Hmm. We got to run it through service. We got to make sure it's ready to go. We got to clean it up. We got to get all the paperwork done. That's a lot of mouths to feed. Obviously, that's a profit margin that not a lot of people like, but that's what we have to do for the books because we still have to keep our lights and doors open. Here's the deal, Buck. What do you got on the 8520T for pricing? $165,000. Okay. I'll do 150 and I'll buy a green cart from you. Which one are you buying? We got three of them. We Let's got two 1050 Kinseys and an 850. One of the 1050s has split row, it has a split set of duels. The other one has a bigger floater tire. Okay, Buck. We'll do 150K on the tractor and whatever price you have for that 1050 is what will take parts priced at one hundred and fifty thousand. Oh as my is, god so it's that one's brand new nate we can't afford a grain cart you got any do you know anybody that has like an old kills bro grain cart that we can buy for like for like twenty five thousand? uh if there is it might be over at the case dealer you probably have to head down south to our other location i'm not 100 percent sure i'd have to check inventory but do you can you look around and see if you can find like a ken we, like well, we a have Kilbert? gravity wagons we got 600 bushel brent gravity wagons in the back i'm not worried about the gravity wagons i'm worried well, that's us. what you're probably sounding like you're going to be able to afford. Well, he is going to be able to afford. We can... <sighs> There's got to be somebody that has like an old kills program. Yeah. So 200K for the set minus 65K for the 8110. Got yourself a deal. Let's do it. What is that? And how are you planning to pay for this? Half cash, half financing. 
Okay, let's head into the office. Well, I was kind enough to give you that family discount of 15% off. So for those two put together, your grand total, if you wanted to go get yourself a loan, uh, it's 114750 bucks. So if you wanted to get a $115,000 loan and just do it all on financing, we can do that. Or you could pay whatever portion and then we could finance the rest. Okay, we'll finance it all. I'll call the banker here. Okay, so we're going to take a loan for $115,000 on this, guys. Interest rate stuck at 3.6, not terrible. And then period of loan is going to be seven years. There we go. Got a loan for that. And then Buck, I'll transfer the money over to you. And there you go, Buck. All right, just let me hang on. I got to head over to the sales. Follow me, guys. This man changes his hat and I'm going to be mad. Take a seat, Nate. Nope, uh, I just had to check one thing. So this is the actual sales computers. Yeah, that should all work out. Uh, they'll have some paperwork that we'll have emailed for you for that way you can keep that stuff documented. Other than that, I'll pretty much take the 8110. We'll put it in the shop, start getting it worked on service-wise. If you want to get your stuff going, we can either truck it for you or you can drive it yourself. I suppose you drove the tractor here, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, we'll take it ourselves. Yeah. And if that's the case, then I'm going to get to work on that because I have to follow out a couple more work orders for Dumbos that are breaking their planters by running them into the sides of fence. Done for. Okay, guys, the 8110 is sold, sadly. I like this tractor. It's perfect. We just need something with a little more horsepower. That way we can run a grain cart with it and then also pull potentially a 24-row planer next year with it. The 8010 wasn't working out. I love that tractor, but if I had the money, I would keep that tractor for sure. It's just right now with commodity prices, we don't have that money. We need something with a little more horsepower. So we got the 8520T and the grain cart. We'll see how this ends up doing. I think what I'm going to do is disconnect this, pull this grain Green cart back to the farm with the pickup and then hook back up to the planner. That's what I'm thinking. We'll fire up. But I'm thinking this tractor sounds awesome, dude. I love this. And also shout out to Shaben Modding for sending some of these mods. Some of these I think were public and some of them were private. And so there's also some new sounds coming to that 30 series that we're going to have too. So we got some cool mods coming. Um, shout out to him for uh, helping me out there. Okay, we'll hook the 8520 back up to the planner here. Got everything hooked up there. Should be good to go. And that's going to plant corn. But first I'm going to go grab the pickup quick and run this grain cart back to the farm. Okay, we'll pull in here to the dealer. Get this grain cart all moved. I think Buck and Nate are doing some wheeling and dealing over there some sort. Okay, we're going to get the 250 hooked up here. And I don't know if this is going to squat out the truck a lot or what. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's a little heavy on the 250. Holy Toledo. I don't know if this is... Oh, boy. It's literally like touching the ground and then bouncing up and down. This is going to destroy my truck. Well, we're going to try and pull her. We'll see what happens. Nate, you think she's going to pull her? <laughs> what is wrong with your... What is wrong with you? That's a uh, new shocks needed, new leaf spring. Yeah, okay. It's a Ford, man. Built tough, right? She'll hey, let you know you're dragging your hitch on the ground. I know, I know. She's scraping a little bit. Just don't tell the DOT about that. A little bit. Good lord. We'll be good. Hey, where'd you put your tractor at? It's back there on the planter. You you can start planting if you want. All right, yeah. I was gonna leave my stuff at the dealership, and then I'm going to go ahead and start your planting. Then. Okay. We're gonna throw the hazards on. We're gonna take her nice and slow down the road because I cannot go fast with this. Otherwise, uh, we'll tip her. Okay, we're gonna back this grain cart into the shed here. Luckily, this thing fits in here because our, our uh, fuel cultivator doesn't fit in this shed. So this will be a perfect spot for it. We got her here somehow. Kept her slow and easy, of course. You guys didn't see me speeding. And there we go, perfect. Hey Grant, you on the CB? Yeah. Uh, we have the big field over here finally knocked out. Uh, can you come over here or get your wife or something like that to come drop you off to grab this other tractor? Yep, I'm on my way, bring the pickup truck. You sure you want to bring the pickup truck? Yeah, we'll have to. Okay, yeah. I'll... I'll get, I'd get, I was about to say, get your wife come bring it, dude. Dead four. Okay, so me and Nate, we got 144 all planted. This is done. The last fields we got left to plant are fields 96, 102, 101. They're going to beans, and planting season will be complete. Uh, Grant, I was going to ask you a question real fast. Yep. So you know how we've done everything in this field we can to make as good yield as we can? Yeah. Do we have a little bit of money left in the budget for like a roller? Like 25000 How much, well how much yield roller. advantage would that give us? I think it definitely should pay the roller off. We get every good with it. I say let's do it. It'd be nice to have the 8110 to run on the roller, dude. <laughs> oh, I should have sold that tractor. I love that thing. Well, the roller that we're getting needs a lot of horsepower anyway. It requires what it says here, 160. That 8110 will only have like 165, so you're fine. True, true. Okay, Nate's passing me in a no passing lane. Almost all them out. I see nothing. Have I cleared you yet? Yep, you're good. And there's the dealership that took over money. All that dealership's good for is hurting people's pockets. 
I know, it's addictive though. Okay, and we are here. And Nate is currently getting a roller ready that he just purchased. What he did is he took off the trips, the triples off this, the 535 Steiger, and we're gonna use it as a roller tractor because we're all done with tillage. So this should work pretty perfect. It's basically got row crop tires on it. What do you think? Oh yeah. A little bit bigger than I thought it was actually going to be. Yeah, good thing we put the four-wheel drive on there because it's just a lot safer. It can pull up any hills. That'll work perfect. All right. Um, do you want to go ahead and start getting on beans and I go take this to the big field and at least start rolling that field? Yeah, I'd say let's do that. Okay, we got our last three fields to plant. I'm going to get started planting and I think we're going to have Jimmy, one of our hired employees, come plant one of the other fields while Nate's out rolling beans. Dude, I love this tractor, how it sounds. This is awesome. Honestly, this is one of the bigger reasons why I bought this is because it sounds so good. Okay, we'll get the planter unfolded. Got to switch over to some beans. <laughs> and I ran back to the farm, which was only like a mile away because there's the planter right there. It actually wasn't that far when you run across the fields. And I ran back to Nate's tractor. So that way we can start getting the helper planting some beans. Okay, let's start planting. Got the vac fired up. We'll drop her down and I'm gonna put some beans in. Oh yeah. Dude, I love this FOV view that this tractor has. Oh gosh, don't hit the pole. There we go, we are planting beans. Oh yeah, I'm liking this new setup. I'm liking this a lot. We'll hop out of the tractor real quick. Just double check, making sure we're getting good depth. Depth looks good. Making sure we got good bean spacing. Yeah. Beans don't really matter too much on spacing, but we'll do our best. There we go, we should be good. Okay, and we are planting. We got our AB line set. Nate's gonna follow this AB line and we're just gonna go across this field. I'd like to at some point get rid of this ditch here. That'd be nice. That way we could plant through this whole thing because at some point, I don't think the tractor can really get through the ditch, but uh, we are rolling. And I've got the drone up in the air. We are rolling. Oh yeah, there's Nate coming in behind. He can plant a little faster, so eventually he's gonna catch me. He's almost basically got a high speed planter how fast he's going over there. I'm only going nine miles an hour. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the John Deere dealer and definitely check out Nate's channel and Buck's channels down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.